ladies, girls, women, do you sometimes have a question of a medical, physiological, gynecological, even sexual nature, so personal that you feel you just can't discuss it face to face, even with your own doctor? Well, if so, stay tuned to The Breakfast Show, because here, joining us for what I'm sure will be the first in many weekly appearances is our very own Monday medic, Dr. Paul Collier. Good morning. Hello. Well, strictly speaking, of course, it's Mr., not Dr. But that's not because you're unqualified. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just that uh, technically you address a consultant surgeon such as myself as Mr. But it's all right. I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Paul should be doing this job. No, you mean you think you should? Yeah, no, of course not. I don't know why they chose him. Well, because he probably looks better on screen than we do. Well, anyone would look better plastered in all that makeup. I mean, look at him. He looks ridiculous. Yeah, looks a bit like Barbara Carton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just hope he isn't going to start neglecting his patients. No, 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 no. He came to an arrangement with Snell. <laughs> right, uh, Mrs. Roberts. Answered the question, people are far, far more aware. No question. And what do you think are the most common? Why? What on earth do you think you're doing? I've got a ward round. You're supposed to be ill. This is Roberts. I didn't give you permission to get out of bed. It's Mr. Collier. He's on the telly. I know where he is. He wouldn't be there if I wasn't covering for him. I don't know why they chose him. He looks incredibly nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, it's all right, I am a doctor. <laughs> ah, yeah, you can always tell when he's nervous. He starts stroking that mole on his cheek. Oh, yes, yes, James, definitely. Come on, Paul, stroke your mole. <laughs> there he goes in a minute. Come on, Paul. Yes, he's going to do it in a minute. I know he is. I can feel it. He's... There he goes. There he goes. What <laughs> mole? Oh. And what do you think of the most... Oh, it's gone. Oh. Ugh, he's covered it up with makeup. <laughs> oh, you can still see it though. Look, look, there it is. <laughs> he looks quite tasty on the telly, doesn't he? What, Mr. Collier? He used to bounce me on his knee. Oh, yeah. When I was a baby. I quite liked his mole. It was cute, like a beauty spot. Yeah, he looks okay, I suppose. If you like older men. Come on, come on, back in that ward. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, that's the sort of intimate inquiry I'm here to answer. Naturally, we uh, guarantee complete anonymity. Unless, of course, you're a bit of a show-off. <laughs> no, seriously, though, the message is, whatever you want to know, you can ask me, because I'm here to help you. And remember, it's all right, I am a doctor. <laughs> Why does he keep saying that? What? It's all right, I am a doctor. Oh, well... Trying to establish a catchphrase, I suppose. Oh. I mean, if you're on telly, you have to have a catchphrase, you know, like, uh, my name's Ben Elton, good night. Or, uh, loads of money. <laughs> you know, I mean, with him, it's going to be, uh, it's all right, I am a doctor. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, never mind. Look, I just hope they aren't going to start treating him differently around the hospital. Oh, Mr. Carley, nice one. Thank you. No, no, no. Uh, Mr. Collier. Mr. Collier. Yeah, yes, it's all right over here. What, what's the problem? Uh, do it for me, will you? Uh, just in case I don't make it. Uh, it's not for me. It's for my daughter. Yes, of course. Could you put uh, to Helen? It's all right. I am a doctor. <laughs> I am a doctor. A little kiss on the top. Bless you. Pleasure. Remember, it's all right. I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, uh, Dick, be honest. Does it look as though I'm just trying to cover it up or what? Cover what up? My what's it? You know, my mole. Until you plastered all that orange gunge all over it, I never even noticed it. Mm, maybe I'll have it removed. Oh, what about the grey hair? Distinguished or just old? Yes, I think it's okay. I don't look too rattled, do I? <sighs> Paul, forgive me, I'm terribly sorry, but I was under the illusion that you were appearing on television as a medical expert, not a male model. Oh. <laughs> Too much makeup, do you think? 
Yes, and I was a bit stiff. Well, if you want my opinion, you look like something out of Thunderbirds. <laughs> Quite frankly, I wouldn't have thought it mattered if you looked like a cabbage. As long as it was a highly qualified cabbage. Ah, oh, no, but Dick, you don't understand. You see, if people on television aren't attractive, viewers switch off. And it's no good me giving valuable medical advice if no one's watching. You see, it's all to do with the ratings, and uh, apparently a well-groomed personal doctor scores very highly. Oh, yeah? With whom? Well, with female viewers. Ah, uh, no, we are getting there. So this is why you're doing it, is it? Oh, now, come on, that's not fair. It was the television company's idea to use me. No, no that wasn't my idea. I mean, you'd be doing it if... Uh, if, if what? what? Well, if... Um, if what? Go on, say it. Well, if... Um, if... We all went so incredibly ugly. Oh, dear. <laughs> now you're allowing yourself to be sold as some sort of sex object. Yes. Sort of medical pinup. <laughs> Surgical Samantha Fox. <laughs> You'll be on page three next. Yeah. He already is. Hmm? Yeah. Regular features and new with a big star. Dr. Collier's column. Dr. Collier's column? Unnecessarily phallic, is it? Twenty-something's own consultant, Dr. Paul Collier, your sexy surgeon, solves your saucy secrets. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul, but I think you're getting into some very dodgy territory. What about him? Buying women's magazines. No, I do not. <laughs> Geraldine bought this. It reminds her of her lost youth. Ooh, it reminds me, too. Oh, you just look at the girls. Come on! I mean, old blokes browse through their wife's magazines, don't they? No. no. <laughs> well, of course they do. But don't tell me you don't have a glance at all those classy ladies in the Janet Regas, eh? And I bet you have a little flick through whatever Emma gets, eh? There's not quite the same selection in country life. <laughs> country life? What? All those sporty girls in their wax jackets and the lining so snug fitting they wear nothing at all underneath except green wellies. <laughs> right, all right. Now look, Paul, I'm serious. Since when were you an expert on the sexual problems of younger women? He is the sexual problems of younger women. Uh, I was going to talk to you two about that. About what? Well, I'm doing this survey for the magazine on how younger women feel about older men and vice versa. I'm sorry, Paul, but in my opinion, you're unnaturally obsessed. No, 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 no. That's not true, Dick. He is obsessed, but perfectly naturally. <laughs> yes, well, I've got work to do. I'm not talking about this sort of thing. Well, I've got work to do, and I am talking about this sort of thing. Oh, what do you want to know? Well, as I say, I'm doing this survey for the magazine. And what I want to know is, well, first of all, okay, so you admit you look at women in a magazine like that. Girls. Okay, girls. And you fancy them? Ah, sort of. <laughs> of course I do. But do you ever wonder, would they fancy you? Well, I'd never find that out, will I? Why not? Because I'd never dare ask him. Why not? Because I'm married. But well, suppose you weren't married. I still wouldn't dare ask him. Why not? Come on, why not? In case I got rejected. Aha, so you assume that younger women don't fancy older men. I wouldn't know, would I? I don't go and ask them. Sure, I never thought of that. In fact, a lot of girls actually prefer older men. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Um, what do you mean by older? Well, ideally, I suppose about 30 something. Oh, I see. But if I fancied someone I thought was 30 something and they turned out to be 40 something, it would put me off. Well, it wouldn't me. It's just stupid. I mean, if you fancy someone, you don't have an age limit, do you? You don't say, terribly sorry, you're over 40, I can't fancy you. Well, I do. If they've got the right attitude, it doesn't matter how old they are. And if they're attractive, well, you think they're obviously young in heart and body. And all the other bits and pieces. So who are these lucky fellows? Oh, many heartthrobs. Everybody's got heartthrobs. Film stars, people on TV, that sort of thing. Oh, these heartthrobs, some of them could be, what, 30, perhaps even 40? Yeah. But it doesn't really matter, does it? Because when they're on TV, you know, it's a sort of fantasy thing. You can fancy them, but you know you'll never be faced with actually doing anything because you're never going to meet them. Oh, but what if you did meet them? Aha, uh -huh. well now. <laughs> Paul, I'm not sure I like you asking my daughter questions like this. Dad, I'm not your daughter. I'm a young woman, all right? Yes, I know, but... It's uh... all right. Um, what was the question? Would I actually do anything with someone I fancied on TV? Yes. If they were nice, yes, I might. What, even if they were quite old? Rebecca, you don't have to answer this. Well, if I fancied them, I couldn't help it, could hmm? I? Well, anyway, 
if in a way it might be better. What? Really? Yeah, well, it's sort of naughtier, isn't it? And you wouldn't expect it to last. Why? Because you know they're going to snuff it. <laughs> no, but you know you're not going to marry them or anything. So you'd know it was just a bit of fun. Fantasy come true. Ah, so what you're saying is that your ideal fantasy figure could be or would be... Um... A middle-aged man on the telly. Yeah, could be. But where on earth are we ever going to meet anyone like that? Oh, no idea. Can't imagine. <laughs> Rebecca. Yes. Are you just trying to wind me up or what? I might be. I might be not. Well, that's enough. I'm sorry, but I don't like the idea of Paul asking you if you fancy him. Oh, for goodness sake, I'm not asking if she fancies me. I'm asking about middle-aged men in general. Well, you're a middle-aged man. Well, so are you. So am I. <laughs> yes, I know, but I'm her father and you're, well, you're like her uncles. Oh, I never think of Paul as an uncle. Duncan, yes. Thank you. <laughs> but Paul, well, he's... Never mind what he is. I can think of a few good words. You know what your problem is, don't you? You're beginning to believe your own publicity. Publicity? What publicity? <laughs> Dear Dr. Collier, yep. thank you so much for the photo. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I have binned it above my bed so that if it falls off the wall, it will fall on me. Oh, oh, that's oh. disgraceful. <laughs> now listen to this one. Hi there. <laughs> just, just a line to make an appointment Ooh, with my very own oh, saucy, saucy surgeon. surgeon. <laughs> you can examine me any time. <laughs> After all, you are oh, a doctor. How old are these people? Uh, 21 and 19. Oh, look what he's sending them. <laughs> Dr. Collier, can I have your... Oh, oh. Did I leave my case in here? Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> How's the, uh, the girly survey going? Oh, pretty encouraging, really. What do you mean by encouraging? Well, for us. Middle-aged lectures, you mean? Just leave me out of this, Paul. Oh, no, no, it's really quite interesting, actually. Um, where's my nose? I'll tell you. Um, yes, now, apparently... 19% of women aged 20-something have been out with a man 10 to 20 years older, and 11% have been out with one 20 to 30 years older. But that's only one in 10. Ah, depends which one. The adventurous. <laughs> ah, or the desperate. Ah, in your case. <laughs> ah, sticks and stones, Lionel, sticks and... Ah, here we are. Hang on. This was locked. N no, no, it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> No, but it certainly should have been. You should be ashamed of yourself leaving stuff like that lying around. Have you been going through my case? No, it was open as a matter of fact, and some of those letters are outrageous. Yeah. Yes, and they're addressed to me, thank you very and much. And they have absolutely nothing to do with medical problems. Yes, they have. In a way. Uh. Look, it's inevitable, isn't it? I mean, a lot of the questions I get asked, or any doctor gets asked, by women, are of a sort of sexual nature. Uh. And, and, and if the doctor answers them, then the woman naturally assumes he knows what he's talking about and uh, is, well, uh, well, therefore pretty good at it himself. Oh. So, not surprisingly, the woman begins to fantasize about the doctor. Oh, I see! So you never wanted it to happen! All this fan worship! Of course not! And now you're lumbered with all these women offering you their bodies. Poor old Paul! You know, you're going to have to send them signed photographs of you pouting at the camera, do you? <laughs> That was the TV company's idea. Oh, no, lumbered again. Look, they're just fans. These are fan letters. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean to say you're some kind of heartthrob, you know. <laughs> Anybody who appears on television gets fan letters. Ed the Duck gets fan letters. Not offering to do what these people want to do to him. Not unless they want to cook him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what they see in you. They're sad and lonely people that send those letters, Paul. It's a mistake to encourage them. And that's what sending those photographs does. I mean, you may be flattered, and you may be encouraged, but believe me, any kind of contact is extremely dangerous, both for them and for yourself. Mm. Remember that film, Fatal Attraction? <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. If you want my advice, you will have absolutely nothing to do with them. I don't have anything to do with them. Honestly, do you think I've set this whole thing up so that I can go out on some blind dates with a bunch of medical groupies? <laughs> yeah. Well, possibly for research, yes, I might. Uh... Look, I'm joking. Honestly, I don't believe this. You really don't trust me, do you? Uh, sorry, Paul. Of course we do. Dear Dr. Collier. Uh, no. No, 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 no. My darling Paul. I look forward to getting 20-something each month. I can't wait to see your column. Uh, uh, uh. 
if you know what I yes, mean. Yes, yes, we all know what you mean. I don't think this is on, you know, Duncan. Well, it's for his own good. My only illness is I am lovesick for your touch. I especially adore your mole. Don't ever have it removed. In fact, have it enlarged. <laughs> It's so sexy the way you stroke it when you are nervous. I imagine I am your mole and you are caressing me. <laughs> Men also tell me I look like a cross between Michelle Pfeiffer and Kim Basinger and that my legs make Jerry Halls look like a piano stool. <laughs> Please don't be nervous of meeting me. After all, you are a doctor. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Duncan Waring. You may as well put it, you know, he'll know. Oh, no, he won't. Waring? <laughs> What's this meant to be then, eh? Hey, the temptation of Collier. It was only a joke. No, it wasn't. You don't trust me. You think I'm going to make a fool of myself? It's for your own good. No, it is not. Listen, I don't know if you two are just jealous or, or whether you're getting some kind of weird, vicarious thrill out of my life, but just stay out of it, OK? It's OK, OK. I'll go out with who I like. And if she's 30 years younger, if it's all right by her, it's all right by me. Now, look. Paul. Look, you're not my father, you know. I'll bloody well marry her if I want to. Oh, come on, Paul. Oh, you think I couldn't, huh? Listen, mate, you can say yourselves that younger girls, the only thing you'll pull is a muscle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? 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 yeah. 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 Right. 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 right, we'll see about that. All right. Yeah. yeah, maybe we will. So, keep those letters coming. And don't forget, it's all right. All right. I am the Ha, ha, ha. I've told you before. Back in your beds. Mm. Hey, Dad, look. I'm in Collier's column. You what? Indirectly. Don't panic. Right. Judging from my recent survey, a surprisingly large number of young women are prepared to consider having a relationship with older men. Oh. And certainly vice versa. No. Such a liaison can be beneficial for them both. She gets security and experience. Hmm? And for him, the influence of youth can be wonderfully rejuvenating. Embarrassing, more like. Oh, Dad, don't be such a bitch. Um, look out for these certain signs that a middle-aged male is letting a younger woman into his life. Oh, better keep an eye on Paul. Does he walk with a newfound spring in his step? <laughs> Has he started to watch 30-something? Is he even considering cosmetic surgery? <laughs> Does he seem a little dozier than usual when he comes into work in the mornings? Oh, oh. oh sorry, sorry. Uh... Perhaps you'd like to sew him up, Rebecca. Oh, and uh, if you see your father, you might tell him uh, I'm getting married. What? <laughs> He's, He's what? what? Oh, she's told you, has she? I think it's brilliant. Well, I think it's ridiculous. Who is she? She's called Whitney. Is she a fan or what? No, she's a temporary researcher at the TV company. Well, how long have you known her? Oh, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? When's the wedding? Uh, next Saturday. Well, I think that's absurd. How old is she? Twenty-something. Well, that's how much is the sum? About a couple of months, I think. She's twenty? Oh, you know who are nearly fifty are going to marry a, a girl who is twenty? That means she's nearly thirty years younger. Wow, Dad, you're really good at mental arithmetic. <laughs> well, she'll get hurt. You'll get hurt. Somebody will get hurt. Maybe you, because you said I couldn't. Oh, ask yourself, what sort of... What sort of a girl goes out with an older man? Rebecca said she would. Yes, but she didn't say she'd marry one. In fact, she said she wouldn't. She said it was just a bit of fun. That's all she said. I mean, that's all right. Oh, is it? Thanks, Dad. I thought you'd disapprove. Yes, I do, but see you. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Duncan, for heaven's sake, oh, tell him. Oh, Paul. Paul. Uh, listen. You managed to get through uh, three marriages so far. No kids, no alibi. How you did it, I don't know. But don't cock it up now. Well, this is a turnaround, isn't it? I mean, a couple of months ago, you're all trying to dissuade me from having a vasectomy, telling me I might meet somebody tomorrow. Now that I've met someone, you're saying don't touch her with a barge pole. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I didn't know you were going to go cradle snatching, did I? Paul, Paul, 
But the only time you see people with that kind of age gap getting married is when there are pictures of them in the Sunday papers. Usually they're rattle old pop stars and bimbos. Or uh, total crackpots. Some bald-headed 80-year-old dicker with some weird fat little woman with a curly perm and bra straps turned through her blouse like some demented character from French and Saunders. French and Saunders? They're solicitors, aren't they? <laughs> Paul, please, let's face it. If we're talking TV shows, we three are the medical equivalent of the Golden Girls. And you are fast becoming the Blanche Devereaux of St. Swithin's. The Golden Girls? Oh, we watch that, don't we? Yes. Which is Blanche? Is she the silly one who talks about St. Olaf? Or the one who sounds like a man in drag? Neither. She's the ageing trollop. The one who ought to know better. Are you calling me a trollop? Come on, Paul, seriously. Seriously? Well, I'm getting married to a very nice young lady called Whitney. And there's a small engagement party at the studios tonight, to which you're all invited. Come if you want. Bye. This is ridiculous. I think it's great. It is not great. He's behaving totally irresponsibly. It seems to me that if a young woman is, is infatuated with an older man, which is possible, it's his duty to gently disillusion her, not to take advantage of her. She's obviously very young and very naive, and somebody ought to talk to her. Dad, she's the same age as me, and I'm sure she's got a mind of her own. I'm not. Not if she's going to marry Paul. Unless she's after his money. In which case, someone should definitely talk to her. Now, somebody's got to go to this party. I'm going, and I'm going to take your video camera and shoot a nice engagement present for Paul and Whitney. It's the least we can do. Duncan? Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'll go. And you'll have a serious talk to her? Yeah. Good. Dad, you mean you're not even going to your best friend's engagement party? Certainly not. I shall wait till it comes out on video. <laughs> I tell you, Dick, I wish you'd been there. She really is very nice. Extremely intelligent, extremely pretty. And extremely young. That's another thing that made me jealous. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Paul's a very lucky bloke. Come in. Dad? Oh, hi, Uncle Duncan. Hi. I've just had the video transferred. I think you better look at it. Yes, we'll look at it later. No, now. <sighs> ah, my book. Uh, Paul, hmm? we've got Rebecca's video of the party. I think you ought to see it. Oh, that would be lovely, Richard, but I haven't got time. Uh, no, uh, Paul, now. Paul's party, take one. Hi, and here we are at the engagement party of the year. And here's the lucky man, Mr. Paul Collier. Hello, Paul. And his lovely young lady, Miss Whitney Anderson. Hi. Great looking girl, isn't she? And here is a much awaited guest of honour, Mr. Duncan Waring, one of Paul's oldest friends. And I'm sure his even older and closer friend, Dick Stuart Clark, will be here at any moment. But no, no, I can't seem to see him. Oh dear, it does look as if Dick Stuart Clark isn't here. Well, I know Paul will be very upset about that. Yeah, sorry about the... Oh, no, okay. It's a bit tight enough. We said uh, good luck and all the best. Eh? Oh, and look. Here's Uncle Duncan warning the naive young bride of the perils of marrying an older man. You really had a word with her, didn't you? And, of course, being a TV party, it's full of celebrities. Right. There's uh, someone, and uh, there's someone else. Um, and here's famous researcher Whitney Anderson, the bride-to-be, totally oblivious to the candid camera, enjoying a, a, a joke with uh, an old um, well, school friend, I, I imagine. Um. Gary. He's no boyfriend, actually. Old isn't a word I'd use. She's very bright, isn't she, Whitney? Yeah, he's great. You know, he's really, really sweet. Anyway, this way I'll get my citizenship and a work permit, and hopefully I'll get a job directing with independence. We'll be divorced in six months, and then... Who knows? I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. I'm sorry, Paul. Rebecca couldn't tell you herself, so we said we would. Sorry, mate. What? That? I know that. 
It was my idea, actually. Hmm? What? Did you really think I didn't know? Well, yes. yes. I mean, we, um... Oh, you two must have been feeling really terrible ever since you saw that. Well, yes, you were. <laughs> well, it serves you right for not believing me. I told you I'd marry one. But I didn't say anything about it not being an arrangement, did I? <laughs> that is great. Look, I'm doing surgery, but I tell you, boys, I could not have planned that better myself. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Paul, Paul. I mean, okay, you knew, but yeah. Well, are you sure you hadn't fallen for her? What? Well, at the party, you looked awfully close. Good acting, Duncan. Comes of being on television. We were going to keep it up until after the wedding. Yeah. Yes. Listen, you two are going to have to start trusting me. Now, I've been around a long time. I mean, I know what's possible, and I know what isn't. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I still can't believe it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I tell you, they had me first. That's an idea. I'm sorry, Uncle Paul. And a young lady from Sheffield who writes, I'm going out with a man who's 31 years older than me. Are there any biological reasons why we shouldn't get married and have children and so on? Uh, no, um, no, none whatsoever. No biological reasons. On the other hand, psychological, emotional and social reasons, well, that's another matter. In my view, 30 years is a bit much. Well, that's the conclusion I've come to. Now, Jane, I've had quite a few letters about the um, removal of unsightly moles. Well, quite frankly, I think people worry about this sort of thing far, far too much. <laughs>